It's always a pleasure and an honor to join you, alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen, Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. Alhamdulillah, our focus has always been the Qur'an, which to us as Muslims is the map, the compass, the guidebook that we try to navigate life with. Whether it's dark or bright, we always find that there is a source of illumination and further insight into the inner workings of that which surrounds us. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to remain connected to him, alive in our hearts, that we're able to see past that which is apparent with our gaze and sight. And one of the most powerful images that Allah casts in the Quran is the necessity of having a heart that is accessible, clean, alive, and functioning well. And therefore, what you find very early on in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, which is the chapter and the juz that we're looking at, the very first section of the Quran, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to know that those who turn away from him, it's not because simply their mind is not assessing or calculating right and wrong, good and bad, what's righteous and immoral or what's halal and haram. But integrally, it's because their heart has, has or can have a disease. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ when it's said to them, do not cause wanton corruption, don't cause evil upon the earth, they say, no, we are those who are rectifying and in fact fixing it, making it better. What we've done is improving on what you provided us. Rather, they are those who are corruptors and not rectifiers. Allah says, in their heart, there is a disease. The very first moment we hear this statement, in their heart. Now, the word heart in the Arabic language has more than one descriptive term. The Arabic language is a beautiful language. And as we continue our journey to, through the Quran, you will see this manifest in many ways. So whenever you see a word in the Arabic language, the first letter of the word already lets you know what the word is going to signify or what group of meaning it will be. So, you know, if I was to ask you, give me, a, if I was to give you a letter of the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet, if I say sheen, so you would say shams, you might say shaitan, you might say shajara. Shams is the sun, shaitan, the, the spreader of evil, and shajara is, you know, a tree. But what do all three have in common? That concept of spreading. So the sun spreads light, the shaitan seeks to spread evil, the tree seeks to spread its leaves, spread its branches, and to grow past its trunk. So the letter sheen, in any word in the Arabic language that begins with that letter, it signifies something that goes beyond itself, that increases, that goes beyond a point, and it could be a negative or a positive. Qalb, the heart in the Arabic language, there are three most used descriptions in the Quran. The first one is sadr, the chest. And this is where one's heart, which is protected in the chest, is righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, haven't I expanded your chest, meaning made room for your heart to grow, made your heart accessible to the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Give them the example of the one who was dead, meaning spiritually. Then we gave them life, meaning they gained faith. And I placed light in his sadr, in his heart, in his inner being that leads him in life. Musa alayhi salam used to make dua, as we know in Surah Taha, Qala Rabbi shrah li sadri. Oh Allah, open my chest, show my heart, let it receive confidence and truth of faith. 
The second word in the Quran is Fuad, which is the polar opposite of Sadr. Sadr is patient. The Sadr is um, ongoing in faith. It's full of light of Iman. It is steadfast and 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 stead and and holding on to the truth. The other is Fuad. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al, uh, Al Isra, "In the sama wal basara, your hearing, your sight, wal Fuad." And the evil inclinations of the heart, all of it you will be questioned about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the mother of Musa, When she saw that his basket was flowing towards Pharaoh after putting him in the Nile, in what she believed would save him, her heart emptied almost of faith and she almost ran to him and exposed him to danger. Had I not tied down her heart. Now this is the next word, qalbiha. The third word is now the heart that's in the middle. It alternates between righteous, sadr, and an immoral and inflamed and emotional fu'ad. The qalb means one that turns over or that is shifty or that is imbalanced. Your heart, and that's the greatest description used in the Arabic language, the heart, you can be angry one moment, happy another. You can be sad and joyful. You can be a moment of rising faith and something happens that causes you to question and doubt and plummet in your iman. The dua of the Prophet ﷺ, Ya muqallib al-qulub, ya muthabit al-qulub, in different riwayah, O oh Allah, who is the turner of hearts, who makes the heart steadfast, thabit qalbi ala deenik. Make my heart steadfast, make my fu'ad, make my sadr, uh, you know, hold on to the truth. May our last day be the day our heart has turned back to faith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our last day to be the day where our heart recoils into Islam and into Iman and into Tawbah. Allahumma ameen. So when you consider this, the qalb, therefore, is a statement in the Quran you will hear often. Allah tells us to use our heart in thought. Now, this was something that perplexed a lot of people. All of us, we kind of assume, hey, don't I think with the brain? Isn't the brain just simply where all thoughts are? The, electromagne uh, the electrochemistry of my brain, that's where, you know, thoughts, it's all chemistry, isn't it? And when now you dig a little bit deeper, social scientists, psychiatrists, people who study consciousness, are beginning to understand that, hold on a second, there is a separate, there is a separate uh, mode of intuition and understanding that is referred to as a greater consciousness than just the thoughts that we have in our brain. So when Allah speaks to us in the Quran, to human beings, He will say, أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Do they not use their aql? The aql is meant to be something that restricts you holds you back, stops you from saying, doing, seeing, acting in a way that will bring you, you or others injury. So if somebody does something wrong, you say, what were you thinking? Did you lose your mind? Don't you have a brain? Your immediate thought is you didn't use your brain to stop you from what you said, from what you did, from how you acted, from what you spent, from how you hurt another. The brain becomes important. But there's also another human quality that all human beings, ancient and into our moments today, and certainly into the future, they understand that there is a conscious instinct. There is a, a gut feeling. There's something that tells you what your brain may not detect. And this is where Allah says, Ulul albab, those whose hearts are alive. Allah says in the Quran, Lahum a'yunun la yubsiruna biha. A gifted mankind, eyes, that they see with but do not perceive. They might see light and detect and sense what's around them, but they don't have insight with, their, with what they see. I have gifted them ears that they may hear something, but they don't listen to the truth with it. And I've given them a qalb, a heart, that they do not understand or rationalize or use to detect right from wrong with. The heart, therefore, 
is stressed early on in the Quran. Allah warns us that those who will cause corruption, it's not that they didn't calculate. It's not that they didn't uh, estimate. They might have done scientific calculations. They must. They might have attempted to think about things. But when there is imbalance, when corruption arises, the failing is not necessarily of the calculation, but of the intent of the heart that preceded it or what would come of it thereafter. Allah warns you and I as individuals and all of us as a collective society and humanity in general to be careful with how we let our hearts lead or sadly worse, that we remove the heart and consciousness from the very ideals of our decision making. Anytime you make a good decision, your heart will feel good by it. There is a, even if it's a tough decision, you know, a mother, she loves her child. But if a doctor says, listen, you need to let go. You, we need to perform the surgery. We're going to amputate the section of their body. This is what is best for them. We've calculated the risk on balance. This is what's best for them. That mother, she would never allow anybody to hurt her child. But in that moment, it's not just about the thought. It's now about her heart, that she understands something that goes beyond just the risk and that which is calculated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us wakeful hearts. In Surah Al-Baqarah, as we continue, we get to the section where Allah condemns those who are vile and wicked. He says that their hearts, hasat their hearts became hard. Their hearts became harder than rock, like granite, or in fact, more. And sadly, out of barren rock, there could be good things where water fractures it and a spring may pool of it and waterfalls may irrigate the land. But with these hearts that have become harder than hearts, they become simple. Jazakallah khair. I was really actually quite into that. I was using my... So I, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants us success, that we have an opportunity to continue this journey with the Qur'an. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us happiness and stability and ease. Allahumma ameen.